Hello and welcome to the Weekly Wrap-Up. I'm Louise and this is Leon. Coming up on this week's show, we've got everything you need to know about Star Wars Battlefront's first paid DLC, Outer Rim. We get your reactions on yet another Uncharted 4 delay. But first, Microsoft reveals some surprising news about the future of Xbox One. There are some big changes on the way for Xbox One, according to some recent comments from big boss man Phil Spencer. And we're not talking about some new firmware features or a new dashboard, we're talking a whole new machine, kind of, with plans for new optional hardware to upgrade your Xbox One's power with new tech. Speaking at the recent Xbox Spring Showcase, Phil said that Xbox owners will actually see us come out with new hardware capability during a generation. Now, Microsoft hasn't announced any specific hardware yet, but the implication seems to be it's planning to expand the Xbox One capabilities in a much more PC like way. Okay, uh, Phil explained that growth like you would see in the PC space hasn't been possible in the console space, and I think that's a miss because the television gaming experience doesn't have to fall behind that curve. Ooh, I really want a curved TV. I like what it would look like. He also talked a lot about backwards and forwards compatibility and the idea that you could improve your console as well as keep playing older games with the right extra bits bolted on, thanks in part to a move towards everything using the universal Windows application. Unsurprisingly, the idea of turning the Xbox kind of maybe into a sort of PC has created some pretty strong reactions. Smart move, Microsoft, says Adam Eason. It looks like they're turning Xbox One into a console PC hybrid to stay ahead of the curve, not the TV. I like the idea of going out and buying an extra processor or graphics card for my Xbox if it means I'll get a better quality game. Jim Liu, however, points out an obvious flaw in the plan. I console game because I grew tired of $100 PC upgrades every time a new game came out just to play at the minimum settings. So an interesting idea, but Microsoft will have to take a lot of care not to destroy the one thing that makes console gaming work, the lack of hardware hassle. Now, don't forget, if you have thoughts on this or anything else in this week's show, you can get in touch via Twitter at shiny underscore demon. Uh, at Leon Hurley or even at Games Radar. Now, in other news, Rocket League is getting a physical release that includes a stack of bundled DLC. Mass Effect Andromeda has been delayed into 2017, according to a quote from a recent investor conference. And Homefront the Revolution's Goliath Collector Edition comes with an actual remote control tank. EA has outlined its first paid-for DLC, Outer Rim, for Star Wars Battlefront after some free updates in January and February. This is currently one of the Season Pass offerings and brings with it new maps, guns, gears and heroes. So that sees you fighting through two new locations, the Factory of Sullust, a rocky volcanic place full of platforms, and Jabba the Hutt's iconic Tatooine Palace. There's also a new mode called Extraction, where the rebels have to steal resources and escape with them while the Empire tried to stop them. On the gun front, there's a new Relby V10 rifle, which interestingly is a lizard bounty hunter Bosk's gun, possibly lining them up for a later playable appearance. There's also a new scatter gun, gas grenade and the DT-12 blaster pistol which belongs to Greedo who definitely didn't shoot first but is a new playable hero in this DLC along with rebel pilot Noi Nub. Now, slightly unrelated but kind of cool is that John Boyego, yes, Finn from actual Star Wars, has been asking EA for a full-on offline story mode for Star Wars Battlefront, saying it's more of an enjoyable way to learn controls. Now, EA did point out the single-player missions in the game, which John thinks are great, but leave you wanting to engage the narrative. He then asked if he could visit EA's UK base, to which EA said, and I quote, it's a date. So John, if you're listening, get us a single-player story while you're there, okay? First, the good news. Uncharted 4 still looks amazing. And the not so good, it's being delayed. I know, I know, according to Sony Computer Entertainment America boss Sean Layden, the release is being pushed back to May 10th to allow production time to ensure that all gamers worldwide have the opportunity to play on day one. Which is a nice sentiment and everything, but it does now mean the game has been delayed three times, with this latest holdup tantamount to Sony saying it could hit the April date, it's just not going to. Which to me feels a little odd, especially after the game missed its Christmas release last year, March this year, then April, and Naughty Dog went back into the mocap studio after calling it a wrap on filming to do more. For a bit of history, the studio previously scrapped eight months of work when then director Amy Hennig left and The Last of Us, Neil Druckmann and Bruce Straley took over. Now at the time, several actors left or were recast with one of them, Firefly actor Alan Tudyk, saying weird changes were partly to blame. However, despite the game's slightly troubled past, nearly all of you are fine with it. Do you want a shitty game that's rushed or do you want an epic ending to a series that is well deserving of the love for the company's creation, says Tony Madrega. While Tim Walker reiterates Sony's message that it's about supply and demand, not actually finishing the game. They need more time to get more physical copies produced. So yes, a lot of love for Uncharted and Naughty Dog, and God knows I want the game to be good, but it doesn't exactly sound like Nate's last adventure has been smooth sailing. I still want to spend a fortune on that new Uncharted 4 PS4, but it would be a deception if I said I didn't already have one. Are you getting points for saying the game names? I mean, if I stole one, I'd be among thieves. But you'd be falling into an abyss. A golden abyss. Oh, come on. Right, this ends now. A thief's end. 
That looks like it's it for this week's show. See you next week. <laughs>